Hi, I'm Holly Dodson, and I teach literature and composition to middle schoolers. I love working with this age group because they're really starting to come into some of their own ideas. And I always try to pick books that encourage um, open-minded thinking and digging deeper into important themes. This year, we read The K by Theodore Taylor. My favorite thing to do with students is uh, class presentations because it allows them to be creative and really shine in whatever area of creativity um, they prefer. This particular um, assignment was to create a poster, collage, slideshow, or another type of visual project that shows what Theodore Taylor wants us to learn about racism and prejudice. Use images related to the metaphor of sight and blindness and how the metaphor is used to convey the message in the story. Think creatively. Consider using colors, symbols, images, shadows, and patterns. You may also use photographs or pictures or illustrations. Collect words, phrases, and quotes from the book to enhance and explain your images. So I hope you will enjoy seeing some excerpts from these student presentations. I loved them, and I think you will too. His face could have been blacker or his teeth whiter. They made an alabaster trench in his mouth, and his pink and purple lips peeled back over them like the meat of a conch shell. My father had always taught me to address anyone I took to be an adult as a mister, but Timothy didn't seem to be a mister. Besides, he was black. My mother was right. She didn't like them. She didn't like when Henrik and I would go down to St. Anna Bay and play near the schooner, the schooners, the schooners. But it was always fun. The black people would laugh at us and toss us bananas or papayas. They are not the same as you, Philip. They are different and they live differently. That's the way it must be. Timothy was taking full blows of the storm, sh sh sheltering me with his body. Wanting to hear it from Timothy, I asked him why there are different colors of skin, white, black, brown, and red, and he laughed back, why be fish different color or flower be different color? I truly don't know, but, Philip, but I truly think that beneath the skin is all the same. I had now been with him every moment of the day and night for two months, but I had not seen him. I remember that ugly, welted face, but now in my memory, it did not seem ugly at all, only seemed kind and strong. Something happened to me that day on the quay. I'm not quite sure what it was even now, but I had begun to change. I said to Timothy, I want to be your friend. He said softly, young boss, bass, you've always been my friend. How Philip's blindness sparked a transformation in his opinions. So I have the little cloud here because like his feelings are mixed up and he's feeling a bit cloudy about racism. He doesn't know what to think. And then like at the beginning is racist and prejudiced and like this is his mom's thoughts versus his own. And eventually what his mom thinks about prejudice and racism rubs off on him. And then his racism and prejudice fade away as that happens. And then Timothy dies trying to save Philip from a hurricane and that greatly impacts his prejudice and racism and makes it go away. And at the end, Philip, Philip although Philip is not literally blind in the beginning of the book, he is figuratively blind. He couldn't see the black people as who they are. This is because he looked only at appearance. He did not look deeper. He thought that black people were almost like aliens from another planet. When Philip becomes blind, he cannot see Timothy's skin color. He learns to look at people not by their appearance, but their personalities. He realizes that people are all connected because of the emotions that we share, not because of how we look. At the end of the book, even though he has his sight back, Philip does not feel racism and prejudice to the black people anymore. Okay, so this is my project on the K and what the author is trying to tell us about racial prejudice. I think the overall theme from the K is that it's not wise or good to judge a person based on their skin color. Specifically from the K, when Philip could see, he only saw a black man. 
when he became blind, he saw Timothy for what he really is. He was kind, smart, resourceful, caring, protective. And in the end, he Philip survived because of Timothy. Um, so in the top uh, left corner, it says, darkness cannot drive out the darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And um, Martin Luther King Jr. said that. Says, I moved close to Timothy's big body before I went to sleep. I remember smiling in the darkness. He felt neither black or white. And then in the bottom right corner, it says, Timothy breathed softly beside me. I had now been with him every moment of the days and nights for two months. But I had not seen him. I remember that ugly, welted face. But now in my memory, it did not seem ugly at all. It seemed only kind and strong. Or black. While Philip is blind, he is forced to form his opinion on Timothy only by listening to his words and judging his actions. If all throughout history humans had imagined being blind and only knowing someone by their inside, then the world would be a better place. Philip's blindness made, makes him realize that skin color is just skin color and the inside is what really matters. Physical blindness gives way to a moral sight. And I think that Theodore Taylor used blindness and healing as a way to con convey prejudice and how people judge on the wrong thing. I feel the theme that Theodore Taylor tried to convey is that you shouldn't judge on what you see. What did Theodore Taylor want to teach us about racism and prejudice? I think that Mr. Taylor wanted to teach us that we are all made equally. It does not matter on what your skin color is. It only matters what is on the inside. Another book that we read this year in my middle school literature and composition class was a classic, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. So before we read this book, I had students do a little bit of research about 1960s culture and what was going on socially, politically, and in popular culture so that they could get a little bit of a feel for that decade before they read this book. So again, we did some student presentations and they all turned out great. So I'm sharing some excerpts here. This is Martin Luther King Jr. who was a pastor in church and a leader of the civil rights movement. In 1963, King helped organize the March on Washington, which is where he made his famous I Have a Dream speech. The, fem the feminist movement in the 60s was based on equality, like equal pay and jobs, equal opportunities outside the home and access to birth control. Pop culture in, in the 60s, music showed up in the dramatic rise of rock and roll music. There were bands like the Beatles, Beach Boys, and Elvis Presley also. There was a lot of protests at home in America. Many people were against the war. There were large protests at home to end the war and to bring our soldiers home. America was very unsure why we even participated in this war in the first place. Ponchos, moccasins, love beads, peace signs, medallion necklaces, chain belts, polka dot printed fabrics, and long puff bubble sleeves were popular fashions in the late 1960s. Both men and women wore frayed bell-bottom jeans, tie-dye shirts, work shirts, Jesus sandals, and headbands. Vietnam War. The Vietnam War started on November 1st, 1955, and lasted until April 30th, 1975. The Vietnam War was when North and South Vietnam went to war with each other. The U.S. was an ally of South Vietnam and sent troops to help fight for South Vietnam. Unfortunately, over 3 million people were killed in the Vietnam War, which included over 58,000 Americans. The war greatly divided Americans, those who supported the U.S. troops in Vietnam and those who hated the war and did not think we should have troops there. This caused numerous anti-war protests across America. Music. Folk, rock, and blues were new and very popular in the 1960s. These are some of the most popular and successful artists from the music industry in that time. Fashion. Fashion is always changing, but the 60s will be a fashion era that people will never forget. For bright colors, wild patterns, and fun accessories. Civil rights. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was a big change in daily life for the good. 
Martin Luther King Jr.'s 17-minute speech was a huge part of change. His speech encouraged Congress to move faster in the passing of the Civil Rights Act. The law prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or nationality. Automobiles. In the 60s, cars retailed for around 2,600. Nowadays, the average base price for a car is around $30,000. The Vietnam War. The Vietnam War was a conflict that lasted from 1955 to 1975. The USA became involved in the Vietnam War because it feared the spread of communism. Many people in the USA, especially hippies, were strongly against the war. Woodstock. Woodstock was a three-day festival, a three-day music festival that was attended by half a million people. It is known for a large amount of psychedelic drugs that were used. Many people believe that hippies against the, oops, sorry, <laughs> believe that hippies against the Vietnam War used Woodstock as an opportunity to live out their idea of make love, not war. Thanks for watching my groovy presentation. <laughs>